Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? All offseason, as we've talked about the New Orleans Saints, uh, we have talked primarily about the need for help in two spots on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, the spot defensively has been defensive tackle that we've talked about, and I think there's still work to do there. But we've talked about running back. We've talked about tight end. I think those were both spots that they could have addressed in the draft, didn't because they made trades and just didn't have enough draft capital. Otherwise, they likely would have. Um Still have not yet addressed running back. They did address both running back and tight end in undrafted free agency. We've talked a lot about Abram Smith, running back from Baylor. And, of course, Lucas Kroll, the tight end from Pittsburgh, was the other sort of, I don't want to call it like a big ticket item, but as far as undrafted free agents go, he's a guy that some think have a really good shot, shot of making this team. The Saints did, however, add a free agent tight end on Wednesday. Uh, the Saints announced that they've added tight end Brandon Dillon. Right. Um, I'm not going to oversell you on this. I'm not. Um, but it is interesting for a few reasons, which we'll go through. Okay. Brandon Dillon, you've never heard of him. That's okay. He went to a college called Marion, like Maid Marion, from uh, Robin Hood. M-A-R-I-A-N, Marion. He's 25 years old, spent the first three years of his career with the Vikings, went to the Jets late last season. They released him after the draft. He did have a productive senior year in college where he averaged 17 yards per catch. He's only dressed for five games in his career, uh, primarily as a special teamer, although he does have some offensive snaps. He made one career catch. Um. Okay. Let's look at a couple of angles here, what the Saints have, what they look for out of tight end, and why this may be a fit. Number one, the biggest hope for the Saints this year at tight end is that Adam Troutman, in year three, takes the big leap. I don't know that I believe that's going to happen. I was very bullish on Troutman when they drafted him. I liked the pick a lot. They were clearly, very clearly going to move on from Jared Cook, which they did. Troutman got a lot more action late in the 2020 season, and 2021 just didn't really happen for him. It, it was He was a better blocker than he was a pass catcher, and that surprised many. For the season, Troutman finished with 27 catches on 43 attempts and just 263 receiving yards. It was just not what we had hoped for in year two for Adam Troutman. Let's hope this is the year he takes a step. If not, they're going to be looking for other options. Yes, you have Taysom Hill there. Yes, you have Juwan Johnson, but it is very clear, and we all know this, neither one of those guys is playing a traditional tight end spot. Juwan Johnson is a receiver. Taysom Hill is the Swiss Army knife. You can call him a tight end, but he's not a tight end in the traditional sense of the word. So that leaves you with J.P. Holtz and Lucas Krull. And now Brandon Dillon. The corresponding roster move, by the way, was that they, um, they cut... Uh, Kahale Waring, who was another one of the undrafted guys that they had brought in. So that they swapped a tight end for a tight end. One of the things that's encouraging is that the Saints have always and apparently will continue to employ a traditional blocking tight end. If it was Dan Arnold, if it was who man, Michael Ho Manawanui, if it was Josh Hill, the Saints have always had that guy. Last year, we looked at Nick Vanette kind of as that guy when they brought him in from Denver, and Vanette is still on the roster, so he could very well be that guy, but you always look for possibilities to upgrade if it exists. I think a lot of people are bullish on Lucas Kroll. We've talked about him here. 6'6", 260 pounds, played his first two years of college at the University of Florida, didn't really play much, transferred to Pitt, and then this year, with Kenny Pickett throwing him the ball, he had 38 catches for 451 yards and six touchdowns. For perspective... His first three years of college, he had 10 receptions combined, total in three years. He had 38 for 451 and six tuds, tutties last year. So Lucas Kroll is a guy people are very high on. I am. But 
Brandon Dillon's a guy that's got some NFL pedigree. He's been around. He's 25 years old. He's been around the NFL now for three seasons and has managed to stick around on a roster, and he is your prototypical tight end build. He's 6'5", 250, and can be that guy that puts his hand in the dirt and blocks um, and has shown the ability to catch the ball at times. And I will also say that Minnesota does, in fact, use their tight end, but they've been kind of set there. I mean, Kyle Rudolph was a Pro Bowl tight end there, and after that, you know, Tyler Conklin had a really good year this year with 61 catches for 593 yards. So they haven't exactly had an opportunity for anybody to, to break through there in Minnesota. Is it concerning that he couldn't catch on with the Jets? Yes, because the Jets stink, and they really don't have any options there. Now, Kenny Yaboa, the Ole Miss tight end, he's there in, uh, in New York with the Jets, but... Um, Maybe a little bit of an NFL project. Maybe Brandon Dillon is a camp body. But this signing is why you scout the draft and why you scout other rosters. The way you always have an updated scouting report on a player, if they become available, you know if you can make a decision quickly. If a player gets cut, if a player is available, if you cut a player and need to go sign someone there isn't any delay. There's no reaction time. You just look at your board and make the decision. So clearly this was a player that they had scouted, they were familiar with, they had a roster spot open, and they went and signed uh, Brandon Dillon. So I, I, the, a comp maybe I'll give you is a guy like Jordan Mills. I'm not trying to say he'll be the same role, but Jordan Mills was a player they were familiar with. The Saints were devastated by injuries on the offensive line and with COVID a year ago when they needed an offensive lineman. They knew Jordan Mills. They went and signed him. He ended up starting five games for you last year. I'm not saying that Brandon Dillon's going to... Don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that he's going to start games for the Saints. Maybe he's just a camp body. But what you hope is Adam Troutman becomes your primary tight end and your need is for the complementary tight end that the Saints have always employed. And this gives you options. Maybe Lucas Kroll impresses and winds up winning that job. Maybe Nick Vanette throws them all out the boat. Or maybe someone like Brandon Dillon steps up and earns a roster spot and becomes a part of this team. So we'll see, but it's another name to know as the Saints get closer toward training camp. And it also tells you what we've talked about a while. Two spots where they need options. Running back, tight end. Well, they got a tight end option anyway today. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.